Hey guys, it's Carrie. Today on the farm, I have some new dairy cows. You will learn how a cow makes milk and how it gets processed and finally ends up in the grocery store. There's a fun ending today. Give a thumbs up if you like farm animals. I'm going to do something different here. I'm going to take the roof off and make some shorter for the tractor and for the cows outside. to pick these cows up so we can get a closer look at them. The Texas Longhorn Cow. Their horns grow outwards from the sides of the head and span up to seven feet which is more than two meters. They develop naturally from wild Spanish stock mixing with the free-ranging domestic cattle of the settlers. The cows have high reproductive rates and give birth to calves yearly for up to 15 years and make very good mothers. They keep a watchful eye over their calf and will protect their young from any danger, especially dogs. And here's the little calf. It looks very fawn-like in appearance. The Limousin cow. They originated from France. They are a large framed breed of beef cattle with a bright golden wheat coloured coat with lighter patches on the belly, the rear and the thighs and the tail tip. They have a short head, broad forehead with a lighter area around the eyes and muzzle with fine horns curved forward and slightly raised at the tip. Their neck is quite short with a broad rounded chest. They are quite muscular. Notice that the horns and hooves are a lighter colour. And here's the little limousine calf. They're quite small at birth, but able to stand and feed from its mother within hours. Brahman cow. They are the sacred breed of India and are very hardy and adaptable to a wide range of feed and climate. They are large bodied with a hump on their back where their neck ends. They have a small head with a broad forehead. The ears are large and drop downwards and the muzzle is black. They are easily recognised by the excess skin on the neck throat and underbelly. Here's the little Brahmin calf. Cats and kittens. Every farm needs cats and kittens. These cats love to play. And here's a lorikeet, a sulfur crested cockatoo, and my barn owl. We've got three ducks up here, hiding from the cats, I'd say. Down here is the mother cell, and she's got one, two, three, four little piglets. And here's the dairy cows, ready for milking. They get milk twice a day, and here's where the roosters like to congregate. My cows are very lucky they have a cow massage machine. And here's my dogs and the farmer. There's a farm worker there and the vet in the background. I've got some sheep and lambs which I'll talk about later. And these are my three weaned calves. They don't need their mother's milk anymore. Their mother gives it to the farmer through the milking process. This is the hay bale winch. It slides around the whole farm. 
It's really good. It slides right out to the left there. And to wind it up and down, just turn the little handle. And then the little claws down the bottom can open up and you get the hay bale out. This is my 3D cow. This is not my favourite cow. I have trouble putting it together. I can never get those front legs right and I know I've got them on the right side. It's still a nice cow though. I just don't make this puzzle very often. Shropshire sheep have no horns. They were bred in North Staffordshire in England. They are bred for both their wool and their meat. They are able to adapt to all kinds of pasture land. And here's the baby, the lamb. They are very hardy and strong and vigorous and grow very quickly. And here's mum and baby. That is so nice. Oh, the baby lamb is hungry. <coughs> the Scottish black faced sheep came from Scotland, near the border of Scotland and England. Commercially in the UK, they are important, with blackface wool being just under half the total Scottish wool production. Their wool is used for the production of fine carpets and also for some of the Scottish and Irish tweed materials. And here's the lamb. The mothers are excellent and will defend their offspring against any sort of threat. They are good milkers and able to produce lambs and a wool clip even when faced with harsh conditions. Ah, that's so cute. And another hungry lamb. <coughs> this is a black-faced Suffolk sheep. They originated from Suffolk in England. It has a thick coat of fleece on its body. The sheep have hooves that are divided into two toes. They do well in wet conditions with their hard black feet. They have a gland between their toes. They produce wool for tweeds, carpets and even mattresses. A cow has four digestive compartments. The rumen holds partially digested food. This is where cud comes from. Good bacteria in the rumen helps digest the cow's food and provides protein for the cow. The reticulum has a honeycomb surface and if a cow accidentally eats a nail or screw, it will lodge here causing no further harm. Here the nutrients from the food are absorbed into the bloodstream. I'll talk about the cemental cow later. The cow burps up a small amount of food called cud to chew again. Then it enters the omasum, which is like a filter. The next process is the abomasum, which is like our stomach. The cow's own stomach acids and enzymes are used to further break down ingested feed before it passes into the small intestine. You may have noticed that the previous cow was a cemental cow as well by Schleich, and this is a Papo one. The cemental cattle breed originated from Switzerland and has since grown to become one of the dominant dual purpose breeds. It's used both for meat production and for milk. They've also been used as draft animals, which means a strong working animal that's used to draw a load like a cart or to work a plough. They have white markings on the belly, chest, head and body. Notice the tail switch and the legs are white. The cemental cattle have dark, large pigmented eye patches and horns. There's a fun ending coming up after I've told you all about how milk gets from the cow to the grocery store and into your fridge. The piebald cow is also known as the Holstein Frisian cow. It refers to a breed of large, usually black and white dairy cattle originally from Northern Holland and Friesland. 
they produce large quantities of low-fat milk. Piebald refers to the dark pigmented spots or patches on the white coat. In some countries they are called Holstein cattle and others are known as Frisian. They are most easily recognised by their distinctive colour markings. Each pattern is unique to that animal. The Hereford cow comes from Herefordshire in southwest England. Its colour is characteristic with the body colour varying from rust brown to a deep rich red. The face, crest, dewlap which is the neck skin, underbelly, the switch which is the tail and legs below the hocks are characteristically white. They are found in the temperate climates of many countries and are able to adapt to different conditions easily. In early times they were used as work oxen. This little calf belongs to the last cow you saw. This is the other cemental calf and I'll just point the mother out for you. There she is. And this is the little piebald calf and that's his mother there. These are my two dogs, the Australian cattle dog or blue healer and border collie. Let's have a look around the corner. And here's the tractor and the hare. I'd like to tell you how the milk gets from the farm to your fridge. Dairy farmers feed and care for their cows. Farmers milk their cows twice a day by machine, early in the morning and then in the later afternoon for the second milking. The cow's milk is stored in a bulk tank where it is kept cool and fresh. Milk is transported from the farm to the dairy processing plant by refrigerated trucks. Milk is tested to make sure it is safe and clean for humans. The milk is tested and packaged at the milk processing plant. Many different dairy products are made from milk. From the milk processing plant, milk and other dairy products are moved to grocery stores. Please stay and watch another video with me. Thank you for watching my video. See you again soon. See you guys in my next video.